Today is Sunday, August 13th, 2017, and school is officially in. That was good. That was good. That was good. All right. So today um, we have the Where Oh Where Did R&B Go show. Where are you, R&B? Went straight to hell, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Hiding up in the mountains right along with hip hop. (laughs) Well, well, like real hip hop is hiding in the mountains like... Is it safe to come out yet? Oh no! Oh my goodness! You know, we got a better, we got a better, we got a better chance of saving hip hop than we do R and B. That's how bad it is. Damn! Damn! That makes me, that makes me so sad. You know what that makes me sad, Aaron? Why? Because R and B, hip hop. Well, R and B is where the love lives. What's going on? Exactly. Happen? But see, that's what I'm. That's what I'm, Yeah, that's the point I was. Try, that's the point I was trying to make, though. But that means everybody is just gonna continue making these smut each other out songs, and nobody's gonna love each other. <laughs> uh, no more, no more, no more black eyed peas. Where is the love? <sighs> so we actually <laughs> we we did the um the history of R and B show during um, June when we did the the black the African American. Music I appreciate you, <laughs> I was going to say, you got to say the full title. You got to say the full title. You got to say the whole thing, like a Tribe Called Quest. You got to do like a government. You got to say that whole thing. It's, it's, a pimp, it's a pimp name slip back. You say the whole thing. It ain't yeah, right. <laughs> but um, so we talked about the origins of R and B, and we talked about you know everything. But we didn't focus so much on um how R and B is basically dying out, or how it's really died out. Because I mean, what's the last real like batch of R and B folk that you all would say are out? I would say it came out in the nineties. But then again, what do I know? I don't listen to R and B. Well, like, what about? Well, like, I would say, like, maybe the like the the last batch was like the two thousand, you know, sometime in two thousands, like maybe around the time I was teaching y'all. <laughs> yeah, I can say that. I can see that. Like, it was like a um, it was like a decent uh amount of um like uh ballots that was still around in the early two thousands. You don't really have ballots anymore. No. Mm. And if you do have ballads, they're all fuck songs. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, they're it's like, it's uh, they're what I call uh, I, I um call them fucking duck songs. They're not love songs. Mm-hmm. They're, <laughs> they're like, yeah, I want to fuck you, and then I'm, now I'm gonna hide, and I, well, I'm gonna it's pretend like it never happened. Right. Yeah, R and B artists all about, nowadays. All about the UM. It's all about the I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say no <laughs> names not yet anyway. But R and B artists nowadays is just like they got one foot, one foot they in love and one foot in the strip club. It's weird. Like it's Who weird wins? The last person I even remember making a legitimate R and B love song was Miguel. Who else made one? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Cause um. Like it, it's funny because like um me being a fan of the genre like I didn't even think about like um I didn't and I think I know which song you talking about you talking about Adorn right yeah right because like I didn't even I didn't even think of that song as like a, a real ballad until like I heard like a few females that's like damn we don't get songs like this anymore and I thought about yep. it I'm like damn y'all y'all right like this really this joint is legit right here you know what I'm saying I like that yep. song but I didn't really look at it like that. Mm-hmm. Yep, like you literally don't have anything where somebody just says, "I adore you." Yeah, I love you above all else. You are the best thing that's ever happened to me. Like right. that shit that you just don't hear anymore. Yeah, exactly. But that's why I say I listen to stuff different, like because I gotta let I gotta wait till the hype died down to truly appreciate something differently. Because um, when I first like I like Miguel, you know what I'm saying, and um. When I first heard Adorn, like it was like, damn, I like this. You know what I'm saying? I like what he's doing with this. And but 
it's it's a it's a testament to how numb the the genre is that I didn't 100%. like. And that's the yeah, and that's the right word to use. Like it's literally the word is numb. Yeah, that I didn't like. Pers- that I didn't get like catch the hook on like you know what type of song it truly was. Everybody is like desensitized completely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I be need. I be telling you, I be needing time with some of these albums y'all be listening to. I'm like Vic Mensa. I still like. <laughs> it's like yeah, I listen to that. I listen to Meek Mill. I listen to Vic Mensa. Then it's like oh okay. Yeah, and not then, like Vic Mensa and Meek Mill in the same breath, please. <laughs> See, but like for me right now, at the point I'm at right now, it like it kind of all bleeds together. So I got to give myself time to adjust. Yeah, it doesn't matter what happens. I... Vic Mensa will never bleed into Meek Mill. <laughs> okay. If, yeah, I gotta when, myself. when Vic Mensa bleeds into Meek Mill, just bleed out. Just keep going. <laughs> Cause the shit is over, pretty much. And yeah. And, okay. Just making sure you still there with us. Can you, can you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So, okay. um, right. you know what? I didn't realize how hype I was when Adoran came out, and I. I didn't even connect to the reason why until one day I was just singing at it real hard and I was like, damn. I was like, I'm love song thirsty. Um, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> love I was like, I'm not getting the, yeah, I'm not getting this because like Usher. Love, love, has, love, love, love it. And, 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 Usher, <laughs> like Usher has, <laughs> Usher has stopped kind of making songs like that at this point, like yeah, by that did. time. And like all the people that were known for making that kind of shit weren't really making. Like Neo was still kind of out. But, like Brian McKnight went through his midlife crisis. Well, Brian was doing that shit as a backlash because he was all pissed that he couldn't sell records anymore talking about love. That, right. That's what he says in hindsight, but I think at the time. <laughs> but but he, he but he's not wrong. Like he was trying mm-hmm. to make you know regular love song albums and that, like. Like these albums that say like Johnny Gill is, they're not making any headway with these love song albums that they exactly. Do. And, and and a lot of the a lot of these joints, they them joints is legit. You know what I'm saying? They uh. I, I, that's mm-hmm. when I knew there was a problem when Brian some of them, started, started, Yeah, some of these projects it. they they stand they they stand pretty well, but like people don't people don't give them the time of day, and it's like you know that's not what's that's not what's acceptable now. So it gets put on the um. It gets thrown to the left, you know what I'm saying? So. Well, all that shit is called being thirsty now. Being in love apparently is being thirsty. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is a problem. And we were talking about this last week, like what happens to the. And I'm not just saying this shit because because I'm because I'm we aren't just haters or hate. What the fuck is happening to our? It's gonna happen to our family structure, even further. It's already fucked up right now. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, even further down the line, if you refuse to be in love and you refuse to love anybody, what the fuck do you think is gonna happen with your children? They're just gonna keep perpetuating that shit. Being in love, love is not gangster. Being in love is not gangster. That what the fuck is gangster? Fuck gangster. Right. Gangster but see, that's, the, that's the see, but that's the balance. That's the balance that we talk about all the time. Like um, like what I was saying about last episode with um, Papoose. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, like mm-hmm. people, people um um take him the way they take him. They like, you know, he's somebody to he's somebody to be respected, not necessarily gangster, but like you know, somebody that you know that you respect as a man. But at right. the same time, at the same time, he understands the foundation of that that uh that connection with your your significant other. You know, mm-hmm. and he like you know, mm-hmm. Remy. I want I want our kids to see that connection between us. I want them to understand that this is. You know, this is okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you don't always have to carry this bravado with you. Right. Right. He said, celebrity be damned. And right. that, that's 100%. Yeah, celebrity, celebrity be damned. Be damned. Like, you got to have be a fucking life. You got you to gotta teach your children. And you like, you being a celebrity or you being in the game, quote unquote, or you, you out here, that's not going to fucking do anything. Right. For your family, personally. You know, I mean, thank God that somebody, I mean, it's a man saying that. And it's important, 
you know, these two things are linked together, like our last week's show and this week's show, because mm -hmm. we need the love to come back. We can't not have the love moving. There is no life without love. And you know what's all. sad? What's sad is Papoose is the only person I can think of in recent history to stand up against that. Like, it's not even the women that's doing that. Nope. Mm. Yeah, you got a point. I, I ain't even. Yeah, I ain't even think of that. Yeah. I can't stand that because even the women are like, oh, you know, he's off and he's this and it's that, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Mm. I like to know. That's I'd like to know what some of our R and B think about this. Are you like you aren't gonna name any? Are you? Because I don't think that's a good a, a good time for us to be naming R and B. No, right, no, I'm not, not gonna name Solange. Are we gonna name Solange? Cause that would be okay. Well, <laughs> I, I like to know what, what some people who some people who who promote love and relationships what they think about the climate of the culture and society. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Like, not naming them. Not naming them. Like, cause that's that's kind of relative. It's kind of relative. Not really. You know what? I feel like a lot of these artists do what we always say. Like, they just pander. They're going to mm -hmm. put that shit out there for you, but they're not going to live their life like that. Right. Yeah, I want somebody that's living it. Yeah. And then it's a, it's a, the, the other thing is that we got to stop. We got to stop um, just looking to, like, older artists to promote that, too, because um, we need somebody that's we need somebody younger and fresher. I hate to say it, but we need somebody younger and fresher to like you know vouch for this generation, um, so to speak. We because do. we do. Yeah, because but at the same time we still need we still need the pioneers to, to speak on the show. Yeah, I well, know, but well, this, the point I'm trying to make is that here, like, like yeah, the point I'm trying to make is that of the elders, and we need your like you guys to innovate in our wisdom. Right, right exactly. that's what that's what I'm saying. We need somebody to carry on tradition because, like, um, uh, like with Babyface, like that Babyface and Tony Braxton, John, I like that or whatever. But it's it's expected for people like them to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right, True. Right. We expect them. That's just well, like that's just I like. Mean, case in point, look at well, no, that's a hip hop and R&B album, so that's not. Because I was getting ready to be like this, the Big Sean, uh, what's her name album, right? But that, but that's a hip hop. Art. But I mean, there's a bunch of songs on there. There that's kind of like because it's it's them. It's kind of a lovey, dovey. Right. It's just like you know. it's just like if you say if you say like um well where's all the positive rap music at and it's like well look at KRS and P Public Enemy they just put it like well okay we expect them to do that it's like uh -huh. you know what I'm saying it's like where's where's the generation now that's promoting it like what Miss no. Mitchell said with um with like the progressive. Um, social commentary is like it's a lot of stuff that's going on now. Where's the hip hop that's speaking on that? You know what would I'm saying? You say, would you say Drake is speaking on that? Oh, uh, uh, love. <laughs> would you, um, Drake is Drake, talking about Drake, breaking strippers all the time. Drake, Drake's perception to me that somebody yeah, Drake, Drake's, Drake. per, Drake's like his perception level is like his love sick puppy. Yeah, his his level is like is more so just. And as a matter of fact, he, I think he fall into the simp category, like the traditional simp Absolutely. category. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but wait a minute. I'm glad you said it. He, but, but he <laughs> does that on a record and then outside of his everyday life, he's fucking strippers and kicking them to the curb and throwing them out. Right, I, yeah. I don't think Drake has to kick them in the curb and throw them out no, in them. No, he's doing that shit is what I'm telling you. I think, about, like, like, I, think, I think they're leaving. I think they're leaving, and he's spinning no, it like he kicks them out. No, he's kicking them <laughs> the fuck out. <laughs> I, I they're think, not no, leaving. Drake, Drake is definitely the type to want to cuddle afterwards. Look, what I'm saying is, Drake is like a serial monogamist. Okay. Drake is a serial cuddler. <laughs> so he'll be hey, with these women, That's and he will like want to be with them. You know, allegedly. <laughs> For like you know, like a, like a a week or two or three, and then when he gets tired of that shit, he kicks them the fuck out. Look at how many he keeps talking about. I don't know. I don't I'm know if he's kicking you. them out. 
Look, look, look at the whole J-Lo thing. Look at the whole J-Lo thing. She is a completely different person. J-Lo is a fucking diva. She is a completely different person. Look at the Drake and J-Lo. Like, Drake... Drake and J-Lo probably hooked up on some one yeah, night stand Yeah, no stripper though. She's J-Lo. Look, yeah, they hooked up on some one night stand type shit. That is some what? Drake, Drake, Drake put it out there that they were dating and J-Lo was like, um, nah, you not, nah. That's because, that's because J-Lo is J-Lo level, okay? She ain't no fucking stripper. So he did that shit like, all right, I'm gonna get what I want from this girl, and I'm gonna move it on. These strippers that he messes with or whatever, he's a come up for them. J Lo, he ain't no come up for J Lo. The fuck out right. of here. Somebody on his level, he ain't no come. Up. You can't tell me that Drake ain't the cuddle after type. Though. Drake is definitely no. What I'm saying, he's a serious, he's a serial monogamous. He wants to do that shit for the length of time he wants to do it, and then when he's done with you, he's done with you, and he cuts your ass loose and moves on to the fucking yeah, next. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I think I could see that. I think I could see Drake being that type. <laughs> it's like, girl, let's make this. Let's make this official. Let's make this official it, right here for like a year. Y'all give Drake too much credit. Y'all give Drake too no, much credit. You need to pay attention to what's going on out here. This fool got like yo, a million yo, yo. <laughs> hey, hey, let me finish. He got like a zillion strippers claiming that they're all pregnant by him at the same time. That's because he fucks with them for the time period he wants and cuts them loose and then moves on to the fucking next one. Yeah, I, 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 see, I see that whole situation, but I think there's some facts that's mis- misreported. But what I'm telling you, Ann, is all this shit Thanks. that you think that happened in the 90s, all this, all this hold on. <laughs> Quote, like, all dudes were simping in the 90s. What they were doing in the 90s were they were simping to get pussy. Then they would go off and hide and you couldn't fucking find them. And they would move on yeah. to the next one. My, my whole thing is I think Drake's taking it a step further. He's, like, really trying to wipe these things. I don't think so. I think he's doing that. I think so. That's so a vibe I get from Drake. As That's many strippers as he fucked, he could have wiped one by now, honey. He's trying. He's trying. No, I think. Um, I think. I, I think, think he gives them. He give. He give them the perception that he trying to wipe, and then next mm-hmm. thing you know, at the last minute when it looked like it's about to go down, he'd be like, yep. All right. See ya. Yeah, yeah, that was. That was. That was fun or whatever. I think he been yep. cut off a couple times too, though. Yeah. I'm sure he. Well, I mean, he just said J Lo. I fully look, believe that J Lo. As I've seen the meme. I've I seen the meme of Mill House with the beard and that Drake underneath it. Like, I'm sold. I'm convinced. <laughs> well, I'm, Drake, I'm sure that she did that, but I mean, that's Halo. That's different. That makes Drake, sense. Drake, Drake is right. Mill House, and all these strippers is leaking. But, but we, we like, no, all these strippers aren't. Definitely J Lo is, but, um, we yeah, got reps, but to that's it. a kind of, it is levels to it. And that's the kind of shit that's going on right now, though. That shit went on in the 90s, too, but, the '90s still had a balance where yeah, it's different. I think you, you know why. You know why I think it's songs and then you had some fuck songs too. Right. You could, I don't you think, it's, I think it's different now. Name. It's different now because you got the internet. So like you know you got these dudes that's like you know they not necessarily messing with like you know legit strippers. They just like IG models. Close <laughs> Whatever. I was Close gonna say same same fucking animal. Yeah. <laughs> Close same animal. I just I don't know because I I do have some context because I'm you know I'm the elder on the show and I remember what R and B was like prior to um, hip hop affecting R and B and it's one hundred percent clear that R and B helped to legitimize hip hop and hip hop has been a detriment to R and B. It has, um, but I think you know what I was just thinking, like because we were talking about Miguel's adorn being like a um, like something that you know be, could be considered a ballad. I think that's another thing that um affected me um listening to it on the fir- you know in the uh in the earlier stages because Miguel his his music is still touched by that it's still touched by that hip hop aesthetic. It is. So you know what I'm saying like that's what I'm saying like when it's like I I you know it's hard to like really to um understand that yeah that's exactly what he's doing with that song you know what I'm saying so but I mean that you know what his last album because I I love Miguel but his last album failed to have as many like it didn't have all those love songs on it 
Like right, yeah. Um, his, it was like, like his what's the nigga, the nigga, the the NWA John. Yeah, NWA, and um, oh my God, the Valley. Yeah, yeah, right. Like that was straight up. You know, I want to fuck you, like. <laughs> Yeah. Like, the last one in the valley. Is the last one the last one the one that had uh what's normal anyway, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yep. What's normal anyway is on that one. But the the, the 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 second one, he he had like all these love there was more love songs on that one. Yeah, Kaleidoscope Dream. Kaleidoscope Dream was I don't know, it was weird but I like it. Well by the time the girl came around the future was already done. That's true, but I felt like he was going to revive it for a second there. And then he kind of went the other way and did what everybody did. Like, let's talk, like, let's, let's make more fuck songs. Because, like, I don't know if you guys have played Slither, Slither all the way through. Not yet, not yet. But I've listened to it a couple, I listened to it a couple yeah. times, and it's, like, real popular now. So, like, my sister It is, but there's no, there's no what I would call love songs on there. It's just. A whole right. lot of relationship drama and fuck you and I can't believe you did this to me song. That's the kind of right. songs that it happened now. Either fuck me songs or fuck me on the down low songs or fuck you who did this to me songs like this. Yep. <laughs> right, yeah. It's, right. It's reflective of what's going on out here. It's like it's not yeah. a lot of actual love happening. It's more like people just being tricksters. Yeah, and, yeah they know. responding they responding to like, you know, um, Whatever is going on in everyday life. Yep. For or for like, them particularly, I guess. Or all these side piece songs. And... Right. Side piece is getting reality shows now. Look, Tinkerbell is is full blown legit. Right. Tinkerbell's got see, they got see, anthems. But that's what that's what, I think that's what um <laughs> that's the point we were trying to make to Anthony um a while ago when we was having that conversation about like. Back in the day, people didn't like people didn't like um, infuse those ideas into their music. Where it's like you didn't hear David Ruffin making a song based on his relationship with Tammy Terrell. It would have sounded real crazy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, didn't. and you know what? Even if you did, you either did it in such a way that it was disguised. Right. Or like every once in a while, cause like okay, you might get a if loving you was wrong, I don't want to do right, which is a really popular song. But right, how yeah. many people were going to take that risk? And that that one song was the one you heard, cause what nobody else gonna do that shit. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah. Cause back then that was a little that was a little more. That shit riskier. was gonna be death. Yeah. It was that song was a risk. Yeah. Like I mean, that shit could have went either way. One hundred percent. That that's another thing I was thinking about. Is anything like considered like provocative or risky anymore? Like, is it is it risky now? <sighs> there are R&B songs talking about eating people's booties like groceries, so I'm gonna say no. <laughs> you, have to, <laughs> right. you have to go way out there to be provocative. Like like Madonna isn't even provocative anymore. You remember how provocative she was back in the day? Yeah. Like nothing is going to shock me after I hear somebody say I'm eat, you've got to eat my booty like groceries. I don't know what else you can say. I mean, finger up the butt is not going to shock me. Um, I'll pee on you is not really going to shock me at this point. Right. I'm not talking about like. See, this is the thing though. I think it's been it's going so far out that now for it to be considered provocative, like somebody would have to like go the opposite direction where it's like you making. To say. Yeah, you making yeah. you making a song like The Whispers, I'm gonna make you my wife. Yes. Like it gotta be like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Being provocative at this point will be to do a complete three sixty. Right. Sorry, 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 excuse me, people. A complete one eighty. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a complete one eighty and just being like like on bending knee like boys to men. Exactly. Yeah. And apparently apparently it depends on who does it too, because you know, it only get her if somebody like Jay Z does it. So because they're not looking for it, right? Yeah, that. I mean, that's true. But I, I think it worked for Miguel because Miguel was so new; nobody knew who he was yet, and they didn't have anything to assign to him. True. You know, he was just—he was a guy who like nobody really, 
really was expecting anything from him. So then it was like, oh my God, he made this gorgeous love song. Like, oh. And that song right. was was written for his um, his now fiance. Mm-hmm. So it was, you know, it was real. Well, you know what? A lot of these songs were real. Because like, um, the song Every Little Step by Bobby Brown, that song was, um, was written by L.A. Reid for his um, fiance at the time, Pebbles. Yeah. But he wasn't gonna perform it, and I think that maybe, I think the story goes that that Babyface was supposed to do it, and then mm, Babyface kind of. I, yeah, I, I, can see that, I yeah. think he had like like lay vocals down to it or something, and then Bobby was like just going through a list of shit that he was he was recording with him for the album, and he heard that song, and he was right. like, I got I heard this song. I heard that Ralph Tres Vaughn is actually like backing vocals on um every little step. He probably is. Mm. That was kind of interesting to me because um around that time, like you know, especially um knowing what I know and what we've seen in the um biopic, they wasn't really you know they weren't really like on good terms. But I guess because they were on the same label, I guess I don't know. I think I think he wasn't on good terms with the whole group, but he and Ralph are were besties. They were always on good terms. Mm. So like no matter what was going on with him and everybody else, he and Ralph were always tight because um. Right. He's on Bobby is on Ralph's solo album. He's on Soul Called Gentleman singing. Oh yeah, he damn sure is, isn't he? And 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 rapping too. But we'll talk about that more on the singers that rap, rappers that sing show. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that was a thing back in the day when R and B, you know, singers would just randomly rap. Like right. kinda like um Chris Brown does right now. Chris right. Brown. Now, what do we think about Chris? Because he is one that's curious to me. Chris Brown would give you a well, love song. Well, I um, I said if Chris Brown put out a rap album, I would buy it. Really? And Aaron said, Aaron said that's wrong with the game today. I don't think Chris Brown should do a, 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 a rap album, but I think Chris Brown should amp up the love song. That's what I was thinking too. I was like, I was saying that I was saying that um, it would completely change the game. Like I said, we got to do a whole, you got to do a whole left field thing for yeah. people to be like, for people to be like, wow, that was some provocative shit. Well, Chris Brown got to work on Chris Brown as a person before he does that, though. Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, though, and here's how I feel about that. Mary J. Blige gave us some of the best music when she was fucking heartbroken. In fact, when she stopped being heartbroken, she ain't do as well. And I know that sounds harsh, but I think while Chris is healing to help him heal, he should just write us some forlorn love shit. Right. And sing it to, to exercise his demons and go to therapy. <laughs> I think it's because of he the album to love. Go to therapy too, though. He right. does, though. But, and he can do that while he's doing that. He can do them both at the same time. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying about the rap thing. Not only is that the problem with um the genre now, it would be like for Chris Brown to do a rap album. Like, I expect that. Like, that wouldn't surprise me at all. It would just be like, mm-hmm. okay, here we go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I wouldn't. think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like I said, to go completely left field and be like, you know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to get on some, you know what I'm saying, like, songwriter meets heartbroken situation, like, and it's, <laughs> it's going to be like, you know what I'm saying, then it's going to be like, yeah. wow, like, you know, we never thought we'd get something like this from Chris Brown. Uh-huh. And I mean a fucking album full of it. A whole album full of it. Right, not just a song or two, because then it's like, you just pandering. That's, well, I hate that. Because he does, like, the two and three songs about his fucking swag. And right, then yeah. <laughs> about how he can right. fuck whatever moving, and does right. a fucking song about how hoes ain't loyal. Yeah, and exactly. Then... See, that's what I, that's the <laughs> point I'm trying to make about the whole the whole rap thing too. Like you sitting here saying, "Oh, I would like a rap album from Chris Brown," but we basically get it anyway. You, uh, yeah, I'm like you're already. That's basically, getting... that's basically what we're getting already. That's so, like, what, what we're was... getting from most of these R and B artists because they're not. R&B artists well, it's They're all singing. it's all the same to them. And, and these and hoes ain't lo- these hoes ain't loyal is a rap song. That is a problem. It is it's a 100 a problem because between their asses singing like rappers and then these quote unquote 
rappers singing their lyrics, there's there's no line of demarcation. Right. <laughs> like it's completely disappeared because if you have future, ugh, you know what? I'm giving him this fucking thing too. I don't care if he's not. Perfect. <laughs> that was quite. Yeah, that. that was that. one for both of y'all. So when he's doing that shit, what's the difference between him doing face? Oh, I'm sorry, mask off, and Chris Brown doing these hoes ain't loyal. Not much. Nope. <laughs> not a damn thing. <laughs> not a, not a, not a, not a damn thing. What's Duke Ellington without that swing? So, right. I don't understand the shit for that specific reason only. There should be a Ooh. very clear line where over here is R&B and this is mm-hmm. the kind of shit we talk about. I told y'all I knew this shit was going to hell when 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 Guy came out back in the day in nineteen eighty seven. It was like eighty eight. It was the it was the beginning of eighty eight. When all of a sudden they have a fucking song spend the night where Teddy is saying shit that you only say in hip hop lyrics. In yep. in our in an up tempo. Not an up tempo. R&B song, he starts saying, well, you know what? I didn't know you were so freaky. Who the yeah. fuck? Nobody <laughs> says that in a fucking R&B song unless you were two people. Rick James or Prince. And they were a niche. They were a niche you know, level. And nobody else was trying to go there because again, like we were talking about earlier, that shit was something that you didn't do unless you wanted to stay in that lane. Once you went in that land, you had to stay in it. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, like, you're not gonna be the, seen as the same way. That's what we that's that's the problem with these artists now. They just like they just like, oh well, this is all people expect of me and I wanna go I wanna I wanna not be looked at as that all the time. I wanna switch it up. I wanna do that's that's what gets on my nerves with these rappers. Like I, I remember back in the day, like I would hear interviews and they'd be talking about their album and it'd be like, yeah, well, what, what, what can we expect from the album? And they'd be like, well, I got something for the streets. I got something for the ladies. I got something for, I got something for the block boys. And it'd be like, yo, like what type of fucking album you trying to make? Like this, like, you know. They don't know. They are towing the line and they are right. fucking following the status quo. Nobody wants like when I sent y'all that shit about Frenchman's um Montana where rap critic was reviewing that song. He was mm-hmm. like yeah. he's like French Montana is like he's not doing anything groundbreaking. He's not like he he wants to fade into the background and just be like everybody else and pretty much be Mab and you know have you buy his shit on a on a fucking Mab like but. People will buy Mab shit in these days. Like I would never buy any mediocre crap from anybody back in the day. I don't want your Mab. I want to know that you are making a statement that this shit says something about you. That this is something that, that you've been through, something that you you know want to see in your life, or things that you have dreams about. Or I don't want your Mab shit. Right. Yeah. I was trying to explain that to somebody recently. They was like, they was like, why you? They was like, you too harsh on artists. Like you be too harsh on like you know, uh, different music and stuff. And I'm like, I do. I'm that way because I don't want to hear something that I wouldn't pay to go see. I don't want to hear. I don't want to. You don't want hear, some you know passionate bullshit. You want to exactly. something that's actually. There's nothing wrong. Like I'm, I'm. They don't even understand. Like I'm a lot. I'm a lot more lenient than people like like Anthony. Like I don't think Anthony is. <laughs> Is, is I think <laughs> Izzy is like more harsh than I am. I think he's more mm-hmm. harsh. Like he just like you know. But me personally, like I don't mind a single. Like if I hear a single and it's like, oh, that's dope right there. Like I like that song. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I wouldn't partic- I wouldn't particularly fuck with that album or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't go see that person that do a show because they ain't did nothing collectively that I really fuck with. But I like that one yeah. song. You know. But like, um, I'm not I'm not trying to dig into. Uh, artists that I I would not go pay, pay to see you do your whole catalog. Like I'm not. Yeah. I'm not really. You know. know I'm not checking mean. for them as heavy. So that so that album I was talking about it was Dick it was Dick Sean and Jenny Aiko and the album is called 2088. 
And I was expecting it to be, I guess, more like more of a representation of something that I thought was going to be more, um, like more R and B slash, you know, um, like emotions, like like kind of like a like a a borderline, um, not borderline, but kind of like a, a a whole baby face Tony Braxton like like album for like y'all generation. Oh, like, right. So, who whose album is this? This is Big Sean and Jenny Eichel. Um, I haven't listened. I haven't heard that. Uh, yeah, I played it, but I mean, again, the most of the album is just really sexual, just like everything else. Of course. See, and that's that's sad to me. Like, you can't. How I'm gonna do a song with somebody that I'm in a relationship? How I'm gonna do an album with somebody that I'm in a relationship with? And it don't sound like a relationship oriented song. I mean, and oriented was, project. Yeah, that was my issue with it. I'm like, well, you guys are in a relationship, and this is what I'm getting. Like, yeah, why am exactly. I getting that? That's messed up. Because that shouldn't, that shouldn't be like that. About, about, people want to hear about sex. They don't want to hear about love and everything that goes into a relationship. <sighs> that is that saddens me. Well, that's first period, y'all. Um. So, um, I think we're split on out to lunch, but I know the shit I'm gonna have to say. Aunt, out to lunch. But, I, this is, you know, this is y'all's arena, this R&B thing. Like. But, I mean, what you got? I think you, I think you have somebody different than we had. I had, uh, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue, I'm sorry. I can't, I didn't think you were going to call me out on Oh, uh, was it R. Kelly? <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was, um, R. Kelly. Yeah, was it R. Kelly? R. Kelly is who we talked about. Yeah, we talked about R. Kelly. Now, R. Kelly makes great music. But the yeah, way he's he living does. his life, the way he's living his life, like, no. Nah. Well, I mean, the way R. Kelly is living his life right now, unfortunately, is akin to some of the music that he's been making in recent years. I I, I agree, which is part <laughs> of the reason why I never really liked or listened to or supported R. Kelly's music. He but early R. Kelly isn't that bad. Like, early R. Kelly, he does have some... Some more I, I, let me say for the record, even before I became aware of the creepy charges against him, like I never <laughs> supported I never supported or got behind R. Kelly's music. Like never. Well, no one can get behind R. Kelly because R. Kelly's gonna get behind you. This is all I'm saying. I don't yeah. I don't want I don't want R. Kelly to get behind. <laughs> Stay over there. Stay over there, bro. I don't think you want R. Kelly to get behind you at all. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Because I think we've seen the tapes of what happens when R. Kelly gets behind you. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen it in a black community. You don't seem to care. So the black Ain't community, that crazy? The black community is off the lunch. The black community is off the lunch. <laughs> well, remember, Amp. Okay, now let. I'm going to just say this, because remember what we said before about Marvin Gaye? If you yeah. are going to start attacking R. Kelly, you kind of yeah. have to... You don't play any more Marvin Gaye records either. I'm, I'm not going to say why. I'm not going to go I into I remember it. that. I remember we talk, I was talking about that. And I don't know anything about Marvin's personal life other than his dad killed him. Yeah, well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Well, you know, because in his in his underage girl. But so. I do know I do know that like here my there was some controversy around that album here my dear. Well, that was his ex wife, but she, yeah, you know she was, was, ex- a, she that's, was that's of age. Extent. That's the extent of my Marvin Gaye knowledge. And here my dear is dope. Like I can listen to here my dear all day. Oh, it yeah, is. Here my dear. Here my dear is that shit. But you might not ever want to listen to the album that came out after, which is. Um, I want you because that would be I've, the album. I've, I've listened. To, who was that about? I've listened to it. It's under the underage chick. 
Oh my gosh, don't know. See, that ruins it for me. <laughs> and that's the reason why, I, but see, my, my point is not that, my point is that we can't be hypocrites. My point is this. Yeah, I, I, separate, I separate R. Kelly's music from the shit that R. Kelly does. Like, roast R. Kelly all day long. Do what you gotta do with R. Kelly. You gotta toss him in the pokey, do it. But I'm still, I, I mean, like... but... the, the issue and problem is if you're gonna stop listening to or watching or whatever because a person does something, you need to poke out your eyes and you need to rip your ears off. Yeah. You're never not going not. to be able to watch yeah. anything or hear anything ever again because people are fucked up. Right. No, well, I'm not. I never. I never even. I never been that invested in R. Kelly either. Like I. I like. I, he one of those artists. Like I said, I pick and choose. It's like he got some songs that I'm like, oh, I like that one. Oh, I like right. that one. You know what I'm saying? But I won't grab no R. Kelly project and be like, rock, just rock out to it. You know. And and a big reason why is because it's the same reason I don't like the drug rap and rap music. It's like it's like. Uh, yeah. it's, it's like this is only one perspective of rap and it's right. like done and a lot of times it's done at a low level the same thing with r kelly it's like every time with him it's just it's a sex it's sex and that's all r b supposed to be about yep. sex. you yep. know what i'm saying and it's like that's that's not cool to me like i don't i don't scrap me that. either me either and and i i definitely like when when i was in college and r kelly was popping you know i was like listening to the 12 play album and he and I got to the song where he starts singing about I like the crotch on you and I was I had to go back and look at the album like the back of the, the CD again like did he just say I like the crotch on you? He likes the crotch I had to literally on. go back to, to to the CD and make sure that that song was actually titled I like the crotch mm-hmm. on you. The crotch. I like the crotch. I like and I was crotch. like okay, okay so I see that we have taken the guy um the guy model of <laughs> of dirty R and B making and 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 the B B D model and we've said fuck that and we've gone to the next level. Right. They not even just they, we're not even like we're not even like crossing the line slightly nope. anymore. We just like fucking it up all together. We just like, like fuck it. Like, fuck your line. Fuck your line. But see I like <laughs> to I like to talk about when that change happened because I feel like there was a change in R and B where it went from to suddenly talking about sex to just being blatant with it. Yeah, I always told y'all it it, it it happened right like right in that new jack swing era mm-hmm. because because got like literally i was in the back hallway when i was a freshman and now all of a sudden you had all these dudes who actually had an r&b song that said the dirty shit that they wanted to say like you know we can um, we can do it like this i can freak you all night like people didn't right. say that shit in R- on r&b records Exactly, and a lot of people, and that's why a lot of people my age they look at they look at R and B, and they just like, well, if it ain't about sex, then it ain't no R. That's not R and B music because that's what we grew up on. We grew up on, like, I'm talking about in a general sense because, like, yeah. I, said, I grew up, well, I grew up on like I grew up on like an older generation of R and B, so I know the well, difference. they don't remember. Um, they don't remember, you know, Tina Marie. You know, writing and you know performing um, Portuguese love. Right, even, right. Even yeah. even Prince had love songs. Even Rick James had love songs. Like even mm-hmm. if you were freaky, like in the nineties, even though in the late eighties, even though Guy had that song out, they also had Let's Chill and they also mm-hmm. had Goodbye Love and you know Jodeci also had My Heart Belongs to You. They weren't just, you know, throwing out sex songs. Like my right. thing, my thing, my thing with R&B, and this, I don't listen to a, a whole lot of R&B, but all of the R&B songs that I think of is like classic R&B songs. They're all, they're not about like your significant other or the woman that you've been in a long term relationship with. They're about a quick jump off. And that's what that shit is about now, and it's fucking sickening. And you know what else is sickening? Thing. This is what's sickening. Vince Staples. <laughs> oh, God. You know what? There are some people whose names we say on this show way too much. Way too much. <laughs> okay. And y'all Vince Staples y'all is, the way. But Vince Staples is quickly becoming 
a motherfucker that we have to put on this list that every two seconds his name is out our mouth because he's nah. he either trolling or he if he ain't trolling he's just ridiculous like so like i think in 2015 is when he said this dumb shit he says that ray j is is millennial generation version of very white well, was it that long ago? Uh-huh. It was about that. And I have, oh, I have one thing to say about that, and that is this. Fuck out of here. Oh, Ray, J, Ray, 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 <laughs> Ray J can't be in the same conversation with Ray White. Not at all. Not at all. Ray J is in the same ca- conversation with Ray Cafe. <laughs> Look, there's a bunch of like low level people from Barry's White, um, Barry White's era that I would not put Ray J on a category with. No, no, not Ray J. Ray J ain't put the work in. Ray J ain't put the work in. <laughs> Although that I hit it first was like funny shit. It was funny yeah. shit. <sighs> that was funny as shit and it took full advantage of the viral generation. Right. See, but that's see, that's what we're dealing with now because like I I'm I'm kinda with Anthony on that where it's like that song is entertaining, but I know what to take seriously and what not to take right. seriously. Yeah, that's me too. As far as music goes. We're that's in a time right. now where people don't know what's real and what's a parody and what's made to be taken seriously and what's not. Like And I was gonna say that like that shit is a parody, it's not meant to act right. like like he might as well just name himself the black weird owl making a song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You know what like, I'm saying? I mean, it's not that. Like, that's not fucking legit. It's not legit. And, like, right. when would you ever have seen Barry White doing. Like, Barry Never. White made, made fucking. Like, as Aaron pointed out earlier today off, off, um, off air, like, Barry White came out with that instrumental, that Love, um, Love Unlimited Orchestra instrumental. That first song he dropped, and people were like, oh, Barry, this is not going to go over well. Right. Nobody's singing on it. That yep. John fucking changed. It changed the, the the R&B world. And not just that. It, it almost single-handedly kicked disco off because that's the influence and the sound that they took and, like, used to create disco from that. Right, right, yeah. Like all that but, lush instrumentation, right. all those instruments and all that like the like a huge actual orchestra on an R and B record. Now I'm not saying folks have never done it before, but to the level that he was doing it. Right. On an R and B record. Like not a standard. Cause you would have some people that would sing standards, you know, like maybe like a like a like a Ray Charles. Or like a like you know like um, Aretha Franklin, she's had some of those kind of. Re- he was doing that shit on a straight art, like a straight black record where you would eat some chicken. And drink <laughs> Yo. <with it>. <laughs> <laughs> like he 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 changed the game with that shit. Yeah, not, it's not too many. It's not too many people like in this era or like even in like a recent decade that I that I know that um, we could say that much about. I mean that 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 list is very very short. Like Steve yeah. is on that list. Who? You know, Stevie. Oh yeah. yeah. Steve Lind. Steve Lind Morris. What F is real name? <laughs> uh, AKA Stevie Wonder. Prince. Right. Like that's a very short list. Marvin. Yeah. I'm, not a lot of folks. I'm saying that. yeah. I'm saying like like in the last. 10, 20 years though, like. Oh it's not... no! Oh stop! There's, there's almost no one on that list in the last. Yeah, there's nobody operating in that. Uh, no. That heavily. Mm-mm. Not at all. And so, that's an insult to people. Like that's what I don't. That's what really bothers me is that all this, all this fucking acceptable trolling that goes on in your generation. They think that right. shit is cute. And people want to walk up and pimp slap the stew out of you. Because <laughs> that shit is not... It's fucking disrespectful as all said. First of all, name me one song Ray J wrote and or arranged and or 
played on. Does does Ray J arrange and write and produce his own music? I, I don't I don't know the extent of his involvement. Yeah, I don't I don't think I mean I don't I don't know. I can't say for sure. Like nowadays everybody is like quote unquote producing their own shit, so well, it's, we know it's how just a matter. It's just a matter. It's just a matter of how high the level is, like as far as like. But I mean, you look at what they're quote unquote producing. It's not like it's being done on some, some you know, some level that's that's so right. outrageously high yeah, that you're right. gonna go, "Oh, you produced this song? Oh my goodness!" Right. It's just like um, I remember um, I remember I was watching something about Prince, and they were talking about like how um, um, he was letting people hear um. Uh, Doves, I think it was Doves Cry. And Doves Cry, yeah. Yeah, and they were talking about like, um, how like, uh, they were like, that's genius. You took the baseline out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. you know, and, and then you had yeah. other people that was just like, why would you take the baseline out? You know, and he was like, Don't everybody worry, kept work. saying that that shit wasn't gonna hit because the baseline was gone. Right. It like it's something as small as that, and like people were like, that's weird. Like, mm-hmm. why does it sound like that? And that's the they were wrong. They were wrong. They were wrong. And see, and it did for for a lot of people. That was the album that turned them into Prince fans. Not me, because I've been a Prince fan since day one. Detroit has a special relationship with Prince that other places don't have. Like we were on to Prince from the day fucking one, and always loved him. And we probably love his earlier shit more than we love like. I, we refer to that album as 1984. I don't even call it Purple Rain. I call it 1984 because that's when it came out. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the shit is the shit is really, 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 really a well, fucking mean, amazing. What 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 Prince? Like a lot of people. Like I was digging on Prince in hindsight because I'm young. Right. So I'm going back to his catalog, but I'm starting with Purple Rain because that was my introduction to Prince with Purple Rain. Right. Yeah, my situ- my situation is pretty much the same. Like you know, being as though I'm young or whatever, but like I listened to Prince growing up, so it's like you know, like when I nobody when I dig- nobody I knew listened to Prince. Well, they listened to him, but they didn't listen to him like that. Right, like I, I mean, had Prince records. I had Prince records in my house. Well, I mean, but you had like your brother, you had your your mom, and your like they I just had my folks. I just had my folks. My dad was largely a hip hop head. My dad just listened to. My dad listened to. He worked in a bar, so he listened to like Rob Bates and all that other the other bar cuts, the party. Oh, uh-huh. you got the you got the classics. <laughs> that's that's what I grew up on. I grew up on shit like that. But not not so much Prince. I heard my dad play, play Prince every now and then. Yeah, but yeah. see, I guess like because it was, I it was had weird. loved him so it, much, I you know was always playing Prince like that. Right, it was weird. It was weird for us growing up on Prince, Prince and Michael Jackson. I think because like, um, like being that young, like you just seeing like, like you don't understand what androgyny is, and you don't understand like what Mike was doing around that time. You just like this yeah. dude look like a girl. So it was like, <laughs> you know, it's like it's like what's yeah. going on here. You know what I'm saying? You know, that was definitely like like, like the eighties was a that that shit was a thing in the eighties. Right. And that discussion I think we had before off off air when we were all talking about that, like the eighties the androgyny um was like really, really um heavy during that time and you know, like even guys like all of the deal wore eyeliner. Like I was showing you pictures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Early in bed. Like it's like when everybody was like in Dr. Dre's ass about, you know, all that show. You look like a girl. It was the eighties. Everybody fucking looked like that. Right. Like, I was thinking about that when you were talking about like the gangsters, the gangsters with Jerry curls. You were talking about like I was like what? I was like boy had a Jerry curl. You like uh, you ain't have a Jerry curl unless you was a gangster. Like that's like kind of <laughs> that's less <Yep>. like <laughs> a little but, I mean, that's, that's, it, it is because that shit seems like to to people who didn't grow up like mixed on the on the West Coast or in the South or whatever. Right. And weren't gangster. That shit looks odd to them. Right. You see, like a uh, you see, like that infamous uh, Ice Cube high school picture, and he looked like Ice Cube he, had he that Jerry his... curl when he was in another yeah. rapper. Yeah, his high school picture looked like some type of gangster glam type John and shit. Ice Cube <laughs> was born. Ice Cube was born with that Jerry curl. 
Hey, that's it. <laughs> that, 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 that. O'Shea had that damn Jerry Curl in the group when when they when when, when NWA first. He didn't shave that shit off until right. death certificate. He still had it in America's Most Wanted. He was fucking still rocking that damn Jerry Curl. Because Jerry Curl is symbolic at this point. <laughs> that, so that, so that, that, that's out of line. Oh, Lord. So I want to go on record as saying I really, not only did we talk about the R&B, just the music itself, but the structure and the way that things are done even when you have somebody R&B-ish like SZA come out or whatever or like Miguel, there's no more R&B groups anymore. No. No, no, it isn't. One Twelve holding it down. Who? One Twelve. DSC One Twelve is, that's, that's more, you know, because they, they came out when I was in college. Yeah, they're fairly decent. Fairly decent. Oh, see, don't try to butter me up now. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly First recent by our timetables. By our timetables. Our timetables are still the old school like, timetables. But but old school is ten years ago now, right? Or twenty years ago is old school. Yeah, I, I say twenty. I say twenty. Like ten yeah. years to me is like I don't know. Ten years but that to was me. Thirty is, years ago, nineties was thirty years ago. So apparently, according to all of y'all. Oh God! Please don't say that. <laughs> we're, we're just old, old and decrepit old. And if you go back as far as the eighties, even though eighties oh is the style that everybody is stealing from. Everybody's stealing from the eighties and nineties, but they want right. to tell us how fucking old we are, though. Man, fuck you! You stealing our shit. Yeah, yeah I was. Yeah, I was. Um. Yeah, I was thinking about that, like how people in denial, they in denial about where their influences come from nowadays. Yeah. Yep. That's, well, they don't, they don't know anything. True. Right. They don't, they don't know what they're, and because, because I'm, so I was talking to my friend about, because he was, he was, he was angry during the whole time period, like the whole, like late 80s, early 90s. Because the back in that time period, there was like sort of a war going on on, on the on the airwaves where they didn't want to have to start playing hip hop. Mm. But hip hop was becoming so popular, it was it was becoming inevitable that they were going to have to play it. So then, right? Some yeah. Uh, stations, go ahead. Angie, you know, I was saying Angie Martinez was talking about that, like how the transition was happening, where it was like you know hip hop was going from the streets. Mm-hmm. To actual to actual airtime, and it was like you know, it was like a um, it was just fresh. It was it was, it was a fight. fresh. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was, was a fight yeah. They didn't want to have to play it, right? And like you see that in um, you see that in um, the NWA movie too, where um, Jay was like um, going back and forth with the boy Alonzo. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was just like he was like, man, nobody want to hear that shit. Like you know, like we you know put some of that. Put some of that, you know, that uh whatever was popping, you know, but it was some smooth it was like some uh that R and B yeah. punk shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well it's well so so what was happening a lot of times, a lot like you would get some of these patients that would do backlash and they'd be like, you know, we're no no hip hop, you know, you won't hear any rap on this station or like a they be like a banning hip hop from a certain period of time of day to a certain time of day so you would only hear R&B during that time so he right. didn't care for he didn't care much for New Jack Swing because that shit was, to him was it was actually hypocrisy because New Jack Swing was what we were talking about just like, like now that shit was borderline hip hop yeah right so because the line of demarcation was not as strong anymore with New Jack Swing he was like well what's the effing difference between you playing Mary J. Blige and you playing Father MC. <laughs> At the time, it yeah. wasn't again. It wasn't that that deep. Like the right. the, the the distinction was very blurred. So people who right. liked hip hop, but that kind of hip hop was it was easy and very clear to make. Now, if you want to make a case for like, of course, we're not gonna play. Wu Tang Clan, nothing to fuck with. That's a whole nother, you know, level of shit that, yeah. that is not the same. But <laughs> um, but see, but that's what that's what I'm 
that's what I'm saying about like people being in denial about their influences too. Because back back then, like if you hear Mary J. Blige, like they call her the queen of hip hop and R and B. They don't deny the fact that hip hop has an influence on Mary's music. Well, she's hip hop though. Hip hop though yeah, is a thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like mm-hmm. nowadays, you got somebody like I think people. It's more people nowadays that would say SZA is a straight. That's straight R and B. I heard somebody say that SZA is straight no, R and B. I'm like, not. no, it's not. No, she's hip hop though. There's no more right. such thing as straight R and B anymore. And that's what we were talking about earlier. Your generation doesn't know from straight R and B. They don't have right. the context to know what straight R and B is because they make dumbass statements like Ray J slash Barry White. So it's very obvious to me that you don't know what straight R&B is and what it sounds like and you can't fathom at all because if you knew anything you would know that Mary J. Blige is a predecessor of what SZA is doing and that shit is not straight R&B. Like you were saying before, Regina Bell, Phyllis Hyman, Yep. You know, Patti LaBelle, Yep, they are straight. Ooh. They are Tina Marie. Those are straight R and B. They they would have never gotten on a record like Keisha Cole and said I should have cheated or now now to her credit that song that Keisha Cole did called Sent from Heaven I think that was a yeah. straight R and B song and that was a love song. Right. Yeah. You but see people that know the difference can hear the difference and they like okay. Mm-hmm. You know, but like that's what, but see that's what bothers me though. Like <laughs> people that don't know the difference, they they have too much say in like you know what is and what isn't. Like and people like letting them True. fly with these arguments. Yeah, I mean it doesn't make any it, it doesn't make any sense. I just and uh, unfortunately when people don't have any perspective. It's very right. difficult to talk to them because you're trying to talk them through being stupid and ignorant. Yeah, and yeah, not only do you have to do that, but you got to educate them more on what they're talking about. Too. Right. But they're not trying to listen to you when you're doing that either. Right. Yeah. Like this, so that was, it's going that like. It's like it's getting to the point where like soon we're going to be sitting there having to like, you know, smack some kid upside the head because he like, well, I listen to. I listen to Drake because he that old school unfiltered raw hip hop. <laughs> like he's gonna be like, no, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, if you if, what, look, I just heard XXX um, Tentacion saying that Drake stole his his style. His, his I still style can't pronounce that boy's name. XXX Tentacion. Whatever and he was talking that, about, what does that even mean? <laughs> he, he broke down on, on one of his interviews what it was about. I can't remember what it was, but um, uh, and they were like, "Oh, we like when people know, you know, why, you know, why they name themselves stuff." So. What? They were like, you know, we like when the, um when uh names have like you know a background and a meaning, and you know why you name yourself that. Are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> When you know why you named yourself something, I can't. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he was all pissy because apparently Drake, he still claims that Drake so some um, some flow, like his flow, some kind of way. How? I what? Like, what? I was like, how can anybody tell when somebody still somebody fucking flow nowadays? They all exactly like, like like how Drake Drake the one that steals from pretty much everybody. <laughs> like still from like somebody that sound like he's still in I don't know I don't I don't know what's going on anymore I'm just like I don't know <sighs> you makes you want to give up yeah no, that's can't. exactly we how I feel no we can't we can't do that I mean like you gotta I, you gotta throw on your uh, Marvin Gaye you know what's going on and mercy mercy me you gotta soldier through soldier yeah, through yeah that's another thing. Yeah, like why your, like your Rita Franklin I, um rock steady and you just get yeah. out there and you just keep it moving. Change yeah. don't come. Damn, cook some of that cook. some of that some of that Gladys Knight. Yo, I was listening to, I was listening to um I was listening to uh Gladys Knight the other day and this is like another like issue I had with um like the R and B or what's considered R and B nowadays. Like people don't get that in depth anymore with like um like lyrically with R and B. Um, 
Because I was listening to, um, uh, what's the song? Oh, The Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me. Glad it's not yeah. Word, and right. like when you listen when you listen to that song like it's like wait a minute like is she even talking about a person she might be talking about you know what i'm saying she like that song sound like she yep. was talking about her her faith in god like you know it's like that deep it's like you know uh you know how the song go it's like uh yeah mm-hmm. you know if anyone should ever write it's my funny. life story yeah you'll it's be you'll be there that, Aaron. it's funny you should say that because um when I was, like earlier, I was playing the radio, and you know I talked about this before, I think, too. The, the, right. the DJ started playing Regina Bell, and he was talking about her song, Make It Like It Was. Oh, yeah, that's my shit. Mm. Mine, too. But, and he was saying, well, this song could even be about God, but from what I understand, that song is about God. It's not about a relationship. See, that's what I'm talking about. I ain't even think of that before. Like, you know... <laughs> If you listen really close to the lyrics, she, the what she's talking about is how she would go by herself and she would talk to God and everything would be okay. Right. Just like the song you're talking about, like you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, R&B, R&B love art song. Yeah, another another song like that is Curtis Mayfield. Um, um. Curtis Mayfield, um, what's the song? The Makings of You. The Makings of You is like that, too. I love that song. But see, we're talking about people who have substance and they're about something. The biggest issue that we have in our community now is that every fucking body, whether or not they're... And you can't lean on the fact that, these, that, that they're young. Marvin Gaye and all the guys we're talking about, they were young as hell writing these deep-ass music. Right. Well, I was ready to ask, I was ready to ask, how do you it's feel about, about people... Age. How do we feel about young people today who are picking up all the cues and doing all the right things, but their impression of what R&B is is influenced by what it is today? And that's the problem is that they're shallow. We're very shallow yeah. in our communities right now. We're not, there's yeah. no depth to anything that yeah. we're doing. There's no depth to the people that we're around. Like, and the ones who are deep, like you can tell them they're all off making, um, remember how I was saying like that, um, that uh that neo soul is like the equivalent of conscious rap. They're all yeah. like, neo soul, like fuck y'all with this shallow shit. I'm about to make this deep R and B album. Right. <laughs> you know, like they're not in they're not in Scissors Lane. They're not gonna be anywhere right. near her. They're gonna be making some shit like you know you know I'm an orange moon. Right. They don't even make they don't even like they don't even make like, you know, like thought provoking like it's not the lyrics aren't even as close to being as like thought provoking as like um it's like it's like um Anthony always say Jada Kiss Jada Kiss got that wow factor when he says certain shit. <laughs> no. Yeah, he like it's like it's not it's not it's not really it's not um it's not like a profound song particularly, but that he might say a line that hey you like, wow, damn, that's kinda <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like. So it took like, um, um like like a whole almost two hours for us to get to D Block this week. Just so y'all understand. Uh, oh my <laughs> bad, my bad. World <laughs> record. <laughs> yeah, but like I'm just like R and B songs don't even R and B songs nowadays don't even have that thing to them. You know what I'm saying? Like um another song I could uh, pinpoint that like that when I hear the lyrics too, it's just like still. Like, it's like that's the most beautiful thing I ever heard. Like. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Prince's Prince's adore, adore, he, yeah. Yeah, when he say if when he say if God one day struck me blind, your beauty I still, your beauty see. I still see. When I hear that, that shit, I'm just like, most beautiful love I'm like, songs that I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, I just be like, damn, dog, like why you got why you got you know what I'm saying take her drawers off like that with a line like you know what I'm saying like <laughs> like that know, like, shit. I mean, look, that's what it's about. Like, that's what it's I about. I play Stevie Wonder. Like if you play a lot of CDs albums like in in his like golden period if they will say like um it's between it's just before talking book it's not talking it's, it's one before talking book the one before talking book has um the song um what is it called i think it's called super lady or super um it's like where were you when i needed you last winter i want to say is what what song <laughs> 
But see, um, that that speaks that speaks to that speaks to me as somebody on the outside looking in. Like all I see R and B as is like me finessing my way into my drugs. Yeah, see, and no, like CD Wonder wrote like one of his love songs that he did. Like he had on, um, oh my God, on a, on a double album, his best album in my humble opinion, um, songs in the key of life. The love songs yeah. on that album, like as that shit is fucking bananas. He said, but those love, those love songs, those love songs, they're not, they're not used in regards to somebody that you're in a long term relationship with. Like you put those on when you're trying to get the end. No, 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 no. no, no nowadays, no. nowadays. But that's because people are idiots. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Like, but like, even still, even so, still, even still, that's the way it's presented. That's the way it's served up. But it's not, no. Up. The way I can do it. That's the way it's meant. Like, you don't say things like "I will love you until the day that you are that I am you and you are me" to someone right. who you're just trying to smash. That's your bad for doing that dumb shit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But see, but see, where we at now with it is that like that's in everything now, like gang. Like, but to the point where gangsta rap isn't even like um, promoted as heavily as it used to be because sex, sex sells everything. So like, sex, sex sells everything. Right. So sex is the lane. Ways. It's the a, it's a lane with any genre of music, music now. <laughs> Your pussy galore. Pussy galore. Pussy galore. <laughs> oh, the album is called Music of My Mind. That's when his, that's like the official start of CD's, what they call his like prolific period. So... The right. song that I'm talking about is Superwoman. I knew it was called Superwoman, so it's called Superwoman. He's talking about how much he loves this woman and how she sort of like abandoned him. It's just beautifully heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you don't have people. See, he's in a lane by himself. I get it. Right. But you used to have people who would still write things that were. Mm-hmm. You know, of that ilk, or like even me and Aaron was talking about because we were like Aaron and I were all kicking it, you know, on the on the New Jack Swing tip. Oh um, man! Uh, like, I love y'all, like, me, even, like, y'all had me going in there. Where Albie Schwartz, Albie Schwartz albums were like his first album. He was like he was running the gamut between you know, like I can tell you how I feel about you night and day because that's how much I love you. Right. Right, right, yeah. I can tell you from sun up to sun down. I can tell you that shit. All the, that shit was New Jack Swing, but the lyrics, really? Yeah, it was like, like you know like what I'm saying. I only think of you. Shit. I only think of you on two occasions, day and That's night. Day it's, and like, night. Damn. it's like damn. It's like damn, dog. Who wrote that one? Like yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's little lines like that. No, that they make changed it that. They changed that. Somebody changed that. Somebody used that song. They sang it. Yeah, they, they said. It. Yeah, they said. I only think of you on two occasions when I want it and when I need it. And see that. Oh, yeah, I think I. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that bullshit. That's a desecration to me. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. That's a. That's actually disgusting to me, personally. I only think of you when I want it and think of you when I need it. I don't think. Yeah, I heard that bullshit. Or, but, but I mean, you see people. Now all over YouTube in the comment sections, not just men but women saying fuck these niggas and dudes saying fuck these bitches. Right, and it's like it's just all it's just all it's just all over sexualized. You know what I'm saying? Like even the rap. Even besides sex, like now we in a generation where everybody promotes being by themselves and having a small circle and only getting from people what you need and like that shit is that's very selfish. Very sad because it's it is it's it's not going to promote anything good. Like you, that should be things that you want for yourself. You feel better for yourself and for everybody. Yeah. You shouldn't just want to be rolling for Dolo all the time. Like that is not gonna get you anywhere good. Yeah. I don't know. That's why, man. I be needing my, I be needing that R and B, man. Y'all, y'all had me in my bag this week, and I was just like, yo. <laughs> I was like, man, I needed this because, like, 
I, you right? know, like I told you, I was numb. I was numb listening to everything else. I'm just like, yo, I can't, I can't even tell the difference anymore. So it was just like, you know what I'm saying? When I started listening to everything else, like a lot of them Jones is like, I think I got a lot of them Jones on CD. I remember Anthony, I think Anthony was with me. I picked up that, uh, that Pebbles Always album. That's my yeah. shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that was it. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I know he was looking like, at me like, damn. I'm like, like what you want? Right, he like, what you want with that Jones? Because <laughs> that shit, is, that fucking shit is lit. I'm like, who always. the fuck is Pebbles? I've never yeah. heard of Pebbles. Always oh that my shit. God. Love, love makes things happen, dog. I'm telling you, man. That's that love shit. Love makes things happen. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you're going to do. That shit is fu- so fucking true. That shit is lit. Come on, man. I mean, even, look, you know what's so funny? As dirty as Bobby Brown was back in the day, it's one thing I noticed about him. when I Because I was making up, I was on title, and I was making myself a new edition Bobby Brown, like BBB, um, Johnny Gill, love compilation mm-hmm. this is the thing. so it was just their love songs on it nothing else okay. mm, that's dope so yeah, every, that's and everybody had all these like dirty love songs like you know they like they kind of went off into some places where they had some some there were still love songs but they were like ooh Bobby Brown has more love songs than everybody even Johnny Gill almost yeah, like he doesn't have mm. a lot of songs where he's singing like a ballad and it's not a love song. Right. Yeah. And I think I, I never hear I never hear about him. Yeah, true. I never hear a lot of people um talk about this particular song, but "Girlfriend" is my shit, yo. <laughs> yeah, that's a love song right there. Cause I want to hold you. I want to kiss you. I'm gonna read you some poetry, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that funny? It just is. It just is. <laughs> but I mean, dude, wow. used to, like that used to be about a, a little bit more than you know. I think it's, it's deeper than the music, though, because of, like society. With society, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to let them hold and every woman is a hoe. Well, now, yeah, because we yeah, that now it, that's where it's at. Does the hip hop seep through all of it, and that's what yeah. they do. You're not supposed to let it go. It's right. not. It's not cool to have a girl and be faithful well, to that girl. Well, these hoes ain't loyal, you know. From what the we hoes ain't loyal. The hoes are expected to be loyal, which is fucked up to me. And that <laughs> is the other thing. I hey, yo. Can't understand. Why is a hoe supposed to be loyal? No, hoes aren't supposed to be loyal. Well, you know what? Because these dudes, they have, as we were talking about last week, they have elevated the side piece, and they actually think their side piece is what their girl was supposed to be, and they think their hoe was supposed to be loyal. Yeah, no, stop it, dude. You have a girlfriend or a fiance or a wife or whatever to be loyal to you. A hoe is not loyal, and nor is she supposed to be. I don't so, feel like they understand the difference. and Loyal is a fucking oxymoron of a song that should be. <laughs> <laughs> it's an oxymoron, but it's catchy as shit. I feel like the white people at the label was like, well, aren't hoes supposed to be disloyal? Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of the first folks that said that when the song came on, everybody was singing it, like my age. They're like, I hate this Chris Brown song, but it's kind of catchy. I was like, why is he expecting hoes to be loyal? And everybody's like, uh. What? What? Yeah, like they don't understand. Holes aren't no, supposed but, to be loyal. But then they were like, "Oh yeah, why would a hole be loyal?" <laughs> like, the, yeah. like, they, like they all of a sudden remember because a lot of people my age, like Gen Xers, they won't play their own shit enough. Like we need to be in our own music. That's the other thing that happened is that we didn't expose you all enough to. The actual love songs and shit from our era because they yeah. like that shit did exist. Like I said, Jodeci well, I mean, made we love grew songs. up. We grew up on hip hop and R and B. Well, we had R and B love songs that were still being made. Right. Like, I think if, if you, you know what Maxwell. That was like Maxwell had love songs. Um, right. Angelo had but love songs. He had some love it's songs. Good. It's, 
it's it's good that Anthony pointed that out. Like we really did just grow up on we grew up on hip hop and R and B. Like we didn't grow up. That's another reason like why people don't understand like you know like the foundation of hip hop itself because we grew up on both being like jammed together as it was. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. Like, like yeah, like not not like not pre hip hop. Not though. real. Not real yeah. hip hop. Right. 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 When it's in the just, shadow yeah. of hip hop and R and B. Right. Yeah, so so when those two things prior to them becoming meshed together, like you guys didn't hear like Luther all the time. Like I heard Luther every freaking day of the week. Yeah. Well, see that's what see I think that's a I think that's a the other issue that was like an issue for me growing up because like I said, like I grew up on a lot of stuff that my peers weren't listening to. Like I grew up listening to Tevin Campbell. I grew up right. listening to Luther. I grew up, like, and these were, like, radio stations. Like, on the way to school, like, you know what I'm saying? Remember, I, I sent you the Shanice video. Like, yep. that's why we I, love Michael Bazin, because Michael Bazin played that shit. Yeah, I'm talking about, I'm yeah. talking about before Michael Bazin, though. Like, I was young. And, um, like, I, like, this was, this was, like, my morning music. Like, right before school, I would hear, like, Shanice when I, when I, uh, when I see you smile or, you know, like, uh-huh. I, I would I would hear these songs, you know what I'm saying? And then I talk to, you know, you talking to I'm talking to like, you know, my classmates and stuff. Like I'm you know, I'm a young boy. I'm like they, second they third. Don't know nothing about that. They don't yeah, know second, that. third grade. And they singing they singing like, you know, uh Money Power Respect and all about the Benjamins and I'm like, Yeah, but do you know about Tevin Cable? And they like Campbell, nope. what you talking about? The soup nigga? Like I'm like nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Uh, no, yeah. like, that's a result. Can we talk for a minute, agenda. girl? I want to know your name. Tell me what you uh, want me to do. If anybody doesn't that's know, like, Seven Cables, I'm ready. Is probably like. Tell me what that's... you want me to do though, because my love is always here too. for you. That's my I, shit, I, I yo. That, like, my love is too. always here for you. Look, I paid five dollars for that CD. <laughs> that was five dollars. Well spent, my friend. It was five, like I got over like a mug with that shit. Yeah, you got over like a motherfucker because you can't even get that joint like that no more. Like you nope, can't. It's, it's hard to find it. it. I still got it. It, I still never got that rains, hard it. it never rains in Southern California. Right. But, you, um, nobody, people, kids in our generation won't know about that because that wasn't pushed. Like what was pushed was the thug life mentality, Tupac thing, the whole thug life and being a gangster, being a team. Yep. Right. And in the meantime, if somebody like you know somebody like me, if I if I listen to Anita Baker, if I listen to Regina Bell, if I listen to Woo! Simon, Woo! you know what I'm saying? Like when I get, huh? You saw a listener to that? Yeah, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. But at the same time, you know, it's like that's not for every for everybody else. It would be like, well, that's not that's not Faith Evans. That's not you know TLC. Like TLC is considered. You know, straight R and B for people that don't know better. Well, mm-hmm. Faith Evans, at least Faith Evans, she had love songs too. Yeah, she do. She yeah, they do have love songs, but they don't yeah. like. But I'm saying the point I'm trying to make is that it's hip. It's it's got that hip hop aesthetic yeah, to it that people don't. Yeah, some of her. Some of her. Well, and I argue like with Faith Evans, her up tempo songs do, but her her um her ballads are ballads. Well, right. The problem, the problem was for us as guys to listen to that stuff. It had to have that hip hop sort of approval to it. Yeah, mm, because yeah, because true. It's like, yeah, like it had to have. Y'all can't throw on um um like soon as I get home because that shit is a fucking love song. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't tell my folks that I love that song. I love that song because my mom loved that song. As soon as I get I home. I love that song. Who was that? Who was that? My mom, my mom loved that song. My mom used to sing that song word for word, but I couldn't, I couldn't like that song because it wasn't right. Right. Yeah, that shit was. And the John, uh, it was another John. Um, it was another group. I can't remember their name. I think it was Escape. But they were like, um, yeah. Um, it's, I don't mean to be the man, but I want some understanding. Okay. That, is, that is definitely escape. Understanding is name well, yeah, I, I couldn't want from you. When I told people, I, I didn't I was three. I was three to five. I was old. community. And I love that song, but I couldn't say that I love that song. Right. It wasn't hip hop. It wasn't hip hop. Right, yeah. I couldn't love that song because I was. Yeah, see that shit. That and 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 that's my point about nineties. 
like my generation in the R and B, a lot of the R and B, like when you slowed it down and you had ballads, those shits were ballads. Well, the OGs, mm-hmm. in, the OGs in the nineties, the OGs in the nineties were very closed minded, and they, I feel like they, they were damaging to the culture. They, well, they were because we, we didn't realize. That that shit was gonna turn thong song on your ass real fast. Yeah, exactly. song, but you can love the song song, but you can't love that other shit. Well, no, I'm saying like okay, so when I say and the album, thong, the thong song, song is mad, the song, the song, song is mad, <laughs> the thong song is mad it, as fuck. It is, but the <laughs> song has a love song that was also popular. Incomplete, yeah, like yeah. incomplete, incomplete is that incomplete, shit. Incomplete, incomplete that works. Incomplete yep. that works. But yep. I'm saying is during our generation. That was still acceptable. We still yeah. had relationships. We still understood that there was some deeper shit out there. What we failed to do was pass that on to you all. Yeah, you couldn't be in. You can't be in a relationship. You gotta be a pimp. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you can't even like like I said like with the with the lyricism back then like in in uh, R and B like you can't even say lines like without you girl my life is incomplete you can't say that right. shit anymore right. it's, like, yeah. it's like man yeah. it's kinda, in high school, kinda, in, high school like in high school i had a girl i had a girl and i was the only girl i messing with i was messing with but i had to lie about that shit well, that's insane yeah i had to lie about that shit yeah i had to lie about that shit like i was my yeah that's if, actually if you ask if anybody insane. else asked if anybody else asked i didn't know like yeah i was messing with a couple girls but i was only messing with right. one i was that only messing with one girl sick. That shit is sick. It's sick. It, it is sick. It is. I blame y'all. Y'all. Really? I blame. No. Well, I, I don't. Blame. Don't <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I blame y'all for that children. shit. I didn't do that to you. I don't have any children, person. And, <laughs> and, and, and when I, no, but this and when, and when I oh, talk to you, younger, you got a girl. You got a girl. You only mess with that girl. No. You're corny. Now when I talk to y'all. Now, when I taught y'all, I didn't promote any fucking stupid shit like that. And you know it. I yeah. always want to come. Okay, I was like, no, you treat your, you know, you know everybody will be safe. That's why. That's why I'm going to say this is Kama John. I'm going to say this is Kama John like that. Yeah, that comes from. That's because that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted, but it wasn't widely accepted. At the time. It wasn't acceptable, yeah. I was like, I actually was very, very, like I said before, I was like taken aback that y'all kept singing that song. I was like, they like that shit? We love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, you like need to get my daughter love. You need to get my daughter love. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said, like this song? And what's funny well, is, I mean, ain't that? It that's, it like is. One of, that's like one of the more popular songs on the album. It, like, it is. It is. That album, that album got pinned. But people yeah, love that Because everybody here loves Star, but they didn't even really got live it. But that second... That's second period. Um, we let we let second period go a little bit long because everybody was really just kind of in. Right? But um, Lisa, did we get somebody for Risa? Because I got somebody Lisa, in my head. I know Aaron wanted to talk about Leela James. I'm not familiar too much with Leela James. I like Leela James, but she she's not my bag. But I still like her. I think she's I think she's hella talented. Yeah, I think I um the first time I heard about Leela James um was uh Michael Bays and like I people for people that know that I like I was listening to Michael Bays heavily back in Philly on uh, uh WDS. I'm mad. Yeah, got right. Canceled. I was listening to him heavily on WDS and he was like and he had like this segment where he would like play like B side artists. So he would introduce you to people like um Algebra, uh Eric uh-huh. Roberson. Um Love Eric Roberson. Right, Eric Roberson is dope. Um. Yeah, and um, people people like that that he would introduce you to, and um, Leela James turned out to be one of those artists, and like um, I think the first song I had heard from her was um, music, and she was just talking about like you know how she loved music, how she wanted real music back, yeah, and you know, and it was like it was real soulful just listening to it. It was like you know, yeah. Well, I mean, was, let me was, tell you how fucked up. Let me tell you how fucked up R and B is. What's the joint? I think featured in Panty. Oh Lord! Sing what? T-shirt What's her name? and pants. I forgot. Oh, t-shirt and my pants. Yeah, I forgot I can't her name. Her name. I forgot her name. Start with an A. Start with an yeah. A. But I mean, she was the epitome of R and B to me on the outside looking out. Outside oh wow! Me. See, yeah, that's Adina Howard. Adina Howard. Yeah, no. She got that. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, she got that. Yeah, that was. 
She wasn't yeah. even the epitome of R and B during my era when she came out. Right. She came out. She, 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 she sang came freak out. like me. She freak sang like freak me. like Adina, me. Adina how right. like fifty and I mm-hmm. I bite. I bite. No. See, I put but that that's... shit with fucking thong song. That shit is like really it's really it cartoonish. It's right. like cartoonish. It is. It right. is. But that's that's what was promoted to us as R and B. Right, but that's that's the that's the hip hopification of it because like if you ever notice if you ever notice when when like you know certain people like go back to like sex as being like the main component of R and B, it's always it's always people like Adina Howard, R. Kelly, and stuff like that, and it's like mm-hmm. you can't. It's like people were people were trying to conform with what hip hop was. So to yeah. be involved to be involved in hip hop for you to be you can't be. Feel his time and you can't be Anita Baker in hip hop. Yeah. You have to be Adina Howard. Well, you have to have your well, you have to have your clothes off, or you know what I'm saying. Well, or what you had to... up happening, and I think I talked about this before. There was a new lane created for artists who were more traditional soul, and that's what neo soul was about. If you wanted to do yeah. throwback soul, if you wanted to keep your clothes on, if you did not want to sing a bunch right. of niche. R&B records talking about freaks like me I'm a hump the floor then you were Erica Badu or you were Maxwell or you were D'Angelo and you did a more traditional it was still hip hop influence but it wasn't to the point where the soul was completely lost from it right what? and you gotta be what? like to be to be accepted as that um that female in, in hip hop either you had to be that female with your clothes off or talking about sex you know, Adina Howard, Lil' Kim, or you had to be that around the way girl, you know what I'm saying? You had to represent like, that around like the Mary way. J. Like Mary J. Um, you know, people like that. You know what I'm but saying? Or you had to that, actually that or you had to actually be able to rap about. as a female. But that's why I was the that 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 to me it made sense that Neo so opened up because now you have Erica Badu who has Every fucking stitch of her clothes on. Not only that, but she's wearing a fucking head wrap. I would, and a unk. I would, I would shoot up Erica Badu's club any day. I'm not even going there. Her clothes is not <laughs> But yeah. my, up, but my point, but uh, my point is, when shit went left, some people went right, and they were like, "Fuck that, we're gonna go this way with it." The problem is that now everybody just going left, and nobody going right. Right. <laughs> yeah. They they ain't saying, well, you know what? We don't want to go that way. Let's all go. We gonna all go right over here and do this. Like, there's nobody creating a movement to the di- to diverge from this shit when they don't like it. And it, even if they do do it, everybody so low level and down in the dirt. It seems like nobody wants to have anything that's worth anything or has any substance to it and that's a fucking problem like a very yeah, very very bad problem because i can't listen to to you mindlessly going about nothing in a record in hip-hop and then i turn to that's supposed to give me a reprieve and all i hear is more mindless nothing over there mm-hmm and that's all it that's all it is really that's all it is and this shit is really i can't man and you got and you got people that's that's um that's like too proud to have anybody else write their stuff or you got people that like they just want to like um you know live in a little bubble and say what they want to say do what they want to do and have it just come out however without even having like any type of knowledge on the situation yeah this i don't know man It's, it's It's jacked up out here, but but hopefully hopefully that when people start coming through and cleaning up, you know, hip hop because people are trying, they like they're trying. Hopefully when they clean hip hop up, they'll they'll try to do the same thing with R and B at the same time. Like like can can we get some? You know, can y'all read a book? Right. I'll um. Fucking Lord Jamar, read a book, bitch. <laughs> read, read a book challenge. Maybe when everybody starts reading more books, they'll come up with something that that's better that I I can listen to because I'm listening mm. to my old soul records. I go back, go back and play my old Benny Ripperton shit. Right, you can't. That's see, that's where we at. You gotta go back 
to hear a song that that's like that you know uh profound you got to go backwards you can't you know what i'm saying we don't have anything like representative of that now but the other problem too is hip-hop samples really heavily and my boy and i were talking about this and he was like saying he was he was like this is gonna be stupid 20 years from now when you don't have anything else to sample too tough because you start sampling shit that you fucking sample because you're not making anything worth sampling Mm, yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I was thinking and about that we're, too. And we're and we're definitely at that place too because what are you gonna? I mean, you can sample some shit from the '90s that was original, but that's about where that shit ends. It dead ends right there. Right. And that's it. Like sampling Jodeci. That shit. Mm. Like they had they had some like like drum samples and stuff on some things. But the music right. they're making, like that, that shit was original. What Devonte made, so yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about too. Like, um, you talking about uh, like sampling and drum sample. Shout out to Google for that app they did. Yo, that was kind of dope. What's that? What app? That um, that DJ app that Google did. Yo, that Google drum was yo. They got that shit right. I was like, yeah, that shit was. Yeah, that shit they was got that shit what right. is it? Like what is it again? What, what, Google, basically, what they the did. Google they did for the birthday of hip hop. Oh yeah, I saw that. Happy they birthday, got that shit. Yeah. That shit. <laughs> Apparently, it's forty-four years old. Fuck y'all, I'm forty-three. Yeah. I want to go to fifteen twenty Cedric Avenue and shoot a video. Hip hop is one year older than me. It's the same age as Nas. <laughs> <laughs> they they got that shit. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I'm as old as hip hop. Yeah, but yeah, go get that, go get that um that Leela James album, man. That John is dope. Yeah, yeah, Leela James is um is what's up. So for homework next week, um we are going to be reading two books. One is Mo Meta Blues, which is an autobiography by none other than Question Love Thompson, aka Quest Love from the Root. The drummer, the man in the back with the pick, the fist. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also going to be reading um, Common, aka Lonnie Rashid Lynn. One day, mm-hmm. it'll all make sense. One day. Hopefully, Calm. Hopefully, it'll all make sense one day. I don't one even day. know if that hopefully. title means anything right now. <laughs> but one day, <laughs> hopefully, this shit will make sense and we can actually say that. Uh, so that's homework for next week. And school is officially out.